I feel like trace route's something everybody's used before, but not necessarily everybody knows how or why it works. Sometimes, like I'll show you, um, right now, if I try to do, there, my ping works just fine, right? Ping 8.8.8.8, .8 no problem. Trace route is trace RT in Windows, 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. I'm not going to get anything back, I bet. And it's because my firewall isn't set up to allow those ICMP messages to return. Dave, didn't know TTL worked like that. Awesome. Awesome. It's cool because it's something that everybody uses, but not everybody always appreciates. Does TraceRat always work? Well, look at what I'm showing you right here. I'm not getting any responses. Well, what's happening is packets are leaving and an ICMP error message is coming back. My firewall is not inspecting these ICMP error messages, comparing them to a session table, and figuring out who the appropriate internal user is, and then nadding that back to the original user. Your firewall can do that stuff if you tell it to. Um, I just, I've been messing with my firewall lately, and it's not configured to do that right now. So if you see a scenario where trace route's not working, it's these ICMP error messages that are coming back. Let's talk about ICMP for a second. A lot of people block ICMP. Why? Because they don't want people to see them on the network. They want to hide. I go, well, that's just ping. ICMP does a lot more than ping. So I'm going to do a search for ICMP message types. And I just want to grab like Wikipedia real quick. There we go, first one. So ICMP can be used for tons of stuff. When we ping, we send a type 8, which is an echo request, and a type 0 comes back in. That works because my firewall is inspecting the echo request going out, and he allows the one echo reply to come in. But a lot of times, you'll see things like, a number 11. This is time exceeded. So if you see it 11, 0, that says your TTL expired in transit. So what I could do, and you guys can do this yourselves, you could look through here and you could go, do I want a message that says, hey, your destination was unreachable? Why? Network administratively prohibited, host administratively prohibited. Some systems will actually tell you I am filtering. Other ones will tell you fragmentation required but your don't fragment flag was set. It might tell you ports or hosts are unreachable. So you've got this good juicy detail coming back to you. What you do is you come to your firewall, you modify that access control list to permit ICMP traffic based on the message type and the code. And you can be very specific. You can allow TTL expired to come in so that you can still trace route but you could block echo requests. So you go, no, I don't reply to ping, but I do allow trace route to come through. So let's build on that a little bit more. When we do a trace route, <clears throat> what do you send out? Is it ICMP? Is it UDP? Is it TCP? And I would say it depends. There's utilities for Linux, like TCP trace route, And it allows you to send TCP packets to a remote port number, like 25, 80, 443. And this gets really cool. Because what I can do, let's say that I'm in an organization, and I want to know, are they doing anything with my web traffic? Some people will redirect all the web traffic to a proxy or portal, and they'll do sanitization. They might try to do SSL decrypt. Some people will do redirects on port 25, for spam filtering, or maybe they're just monitoring or mining all the data. So what I can do is I can say trace route to my IP address at home. Because you know, let's say that I'm running mail servers and web servers at home, and it says it takes you 12 hops to get home. Okay, let me do a TCP trace route on 443. And they go, oh, we got there in four hops. I'm like, either you just found a magical portal like Mario Brothers, or you're redirecting traffic to a site that's not really mine. 
TCP traceroute is the ability to do a traceroute, but when you send a packet outbound, remember, traceroute is really working at layer three by modifying time to live. But because people will use policy-based routing, they'll take different policies on different traffic, we can figure out what a target organization is doing with their policy-based routing by trace routing to different ports, like 443, 80, 25. Pretty cool, right? So two things we learned. Trace route works based on decrementing TTL. It works, it's kind of a hack in the way that it works. That's kind of neat. Um, some of you may have known that, other may have not. Um, TCP trace route, this is probably the star takeaway. If you haven't used this before, this is really, really cool to figure out what are other people doing with my data. We're going to use this to map behind people's firewalls with the concept called firewalking. Um, could TraceRoute indicate something like a man in the middle? Absolutely. There was some sketchiness where like all the Facebook traffic was passing to China for a day. And people were able to see that in a TraceRoute. And they go, what happened? And they go, oh, something weird in BGP and it seemed to be the best path. So <clears throat> crazy stuff can happen on the internet. Um, one of the neat tools, um, this isn't going to be covered in CEH because it's not a hacking tool. Um, but this is one of my favorite tools I've come across in the last two years. It's called MTR, or Matt's Traceroute. And this is a traceroute tool um, that basically runs traceroute again and again and again and again, and it builds a table, and it shows you highs, lows, averages, and counts for where your drops are coming in. So I've used this to figure out um, that there's issues upstream from me. Like I've got Spectrum, and I've got Frontier Internet at home. Well, both of those guys use level three, and I'm in Tampa. All of our traffic goes down to Miami. So there's traffic that has issues specifically at a level three router down in Miami, I can use, oops, this is the wrong site, MTR trace route. And hey, here's just an idea of what it looks like. You trace route to a particular host and it shows you all the hosts along the way to get you there and they'll show you how much packet loss how many packets sent, how many packets received, et cetera, the best, the average. So I'll use this to determine that there's an intermediate device that's dropping all my traffic. And it'll look just like this. And I'll go, oh, look, I've got 13% loss at this particular device. So I'll take a screenshot of that and I'll contact that service provider. Even though I'm not a customer of level three, I'll say, look, we're experiencing this level of drop. They won't say anything, they won't reply, but it'll wind up getting fixed. So super, super handy utility for free.